<laughs> okay, we're all set. <laughs> I've got five more seconds of it. <laughs> Dennis Murray would start planning commission like two minutes early, and I one time I came in and I was like, I was not late to that meeting. <laughs> All right, well, welcome everybody um, to the landmark commission meeting today. Kristen, will you read the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Griffiths. Here. Mr. Chuka. Here. Mr. Meinzer. Here. Mr. Whaley. Here. Mr. Freitas. Here. Ms. Yanda? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here. Okay, we have a copy of the minutes from the last meeting, March 16th, in front of us. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes? Uh, can I have a motion to approve? Do we need to approve? Motion to approve the minutes, please. So moved. Second. I'll second. Seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Eight minutes are approved. We have a number of applications today, so without further ado, Mr. Oaks. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we'll start with 630 Hancock Street tonight. Um, they're here for a sore front renovation certificate of appropriateness. Um, the, contributing, the building's a contributing structure to the National Register of Historic Places. Um, Existing use is unknown, but believed to be vacant at the time. They're proposing to have the second floor be residential and the first floor be retail. It's built in 1909 and it's referred to as the Kubler Block and Stang Block um, in past references. Um, and it's also believed to be the first concentrated shopping area outside of downtown Sandusky. The National Register um, from 1982 stated the following as important features to this building. Um, it is the only limestone flat iron building in Sandusky. Um, this has a decorative stone fascia and a rising sun motif and a corbelled stone cornice. There are stone string courses above each floor that are narrow um, and wide above the second. There is a band in the middle of the first floor. Um, one oriel window is on the upper west wall. The pilasters separate the lower windows and metal bands decorated with stars are the tops of the original windows. There's not a great picture to detail that, that I could find. So there's two project scopes for this. Um, one is to renovate the previously modified storefronts and then also to replace all the windows on the building, front, back, sides. So starting with the storefront modification, the applicant wishes to replace the storefront with aluminum storefront systems um, with the color bronze, paint the existing steel lintel beam, beam door and transom services the color bronze. Um, they want to add a canvas awning um, the color red, as shown in the pictures there. And they also want to add a, a Zeke, an Azek material signboard above the first floor windows of the storefront. And they also wish to clean the stone surfaces so I don't know, based on past meetings, if you guys want to break this out into two different votes or vote all as one package, it's completely up to the commission. Okay. Any favor for or against, Shay? Um, we'll, we'll cover, cover the one. Okay. Right now we'll get to that and see. Okay, so ne next is the window replacement is the second item they're looking to do. Um, so same size location of the original window frames. And the proposal specifies they're gonna use one inch clear insulated tempered glass with brown aluminum frames on the exterior and black frames replacement is a change from the current window. So they're currently black, they wanna to go to a brown, <clears throat> assuming to match the bronze color on the first floor. So staff believes that this will increase the building's curb appeal as the previous project was not finished. Um, Current windows and storefronts have been has significantly altered from historical features from the past parts of this buildings, um, from staff's recollection and um, research. The proposed replacements are more appropriate, we feel, to the historic integrity of the building um, and are aligned with the style of previously approved landmarks commission projects um, that are close related to this. Um, one item that staff would like to make note of is they plan to clean the stone on the building Based on the Sandusky guidelines, they recommend um, to not do that, to keep the building's current character as it has 
could have uh, historical significance. Um, the staff isn't opposed to this being cleaned. We would just like to see the, um, the masonry guidelines be followed, um, which I will include here in a second in our conclusion and conditions. So staff recommends granting the certificate of appropriateness for both the storefront alteration and the window replacement with the following conditions. And that's that all applicable permits are obtained through the building, engineering, and planning departments um, and other applicable agency prior to any construction. Um, second is no stone is painted or altered as part of this project. And third is that the masonry guidelines are followed, which is A, use gentle detergents or chemical cleaners that have been tested for effectiveness and for lack of masonry damage. And for B, which is water pressure should not exceed 300 pounds per square inch. I'll throw in one comment for uh, that I spoke to the architect just now. They're, they did include a spec on the type of cleaner they were going to use that was in the documents, but we missed that. So if you had questions about it, he's here and you can ask him. And the library did something similar. So they washed the building and specified this soap that was used and we didn't raise issue with the library. So I just want to make sure you're aware of those two things. Okay, thank you. Do, does the applicant or the applicants want to come and say something? Is, is that Foster right there, that, that kid coming yeah. up? Yeah, okay. I guess I'm the phone. Architects, yeah. hello again. Oh, Thanks. Good. Thanks. Good. I want to clarify a couple things for the, from the explanation. We are replacing the windows that are there right now. There are some white vinyl, which were put on some time back. Same thing with the storefront. The storefront has some sort of inappropriate windows on the first floor. So the goal, in, at least with this renovation, is to keep those windows in place, but to enhance them, you know, and add some trim to them so that it's, we'll call it somewhat of an intermediate renovation for that storefront. The, the landlord doesn't necessarily have a tenant for the first floor yet, uh, so he's exploring a couple different options. They're commercial in nature, so the use will go back to a, a storefront type of, of function. But what we're looking to do now is, in particular with the aluminum storefront, is the one that faces at the corner, faces out toward Hancock and Monroe. That will be the one that's certainly replaced with aluminum. Right now it's, it's plywood and a series of old wooden doors that you know, certainly are not historic in any way. Um, and to touch on the cleaning uh, methods as well, the products that we have specified, we've used on other SHPO related projects, uh, the Schmidt building being one. There's a lot of just environmental dirt on the building, so it's, it's stuff that just looks like it's accumulated over time. We feel it'll bring back a lot of detail to the building, even just looking at photos from 20 or 30 years ago. The building was a lot brighter and a lot cleaner. It's, it's awful close <coughs> to a busy intersection, so there's a lot that can be removed there. But uh, I'll open it up to questions. Any questions? Um, uh, Jeff, so I, I think that if I recall, this is uh, the um, windows that were put in with a previous owner, I think we're not up to standard. They just kind of put them in. So I think this is uh, this seems like a great uh, solution to something. They're kind of making a repair here. Um, uh, so I guess I don't really have a question, more of a comment. Is that correct? Yeah, we're, and, we're, and we're not changing the size of the openings. I mean, they're enormous openings. They're beautiful. Uh, so we really have no other choice but to put a good window in, in its place because you can't buy a window, vinyl window that's that big. Uh, but, you know, the owner has really sort of taken an interest in this. And yes, this was always a commercial building. So the biggest change we are doing is we're, we have three apartment units on the second floor. So that is a change kind of historically from what it was. But with the fact that we're not altering the exterior of the building and that the first floor is staying as commercial, you know, we feel that it really fits with uh, the historic character of this area. And I think it's really going to be a jump start for this corner. I think, this, well. is, I think this is great. It particularly, we have the uh, library as an example of what it looks like to clean bricks. So, mm -hmm. and we have it. We do have the coal docks pumping coal across town. So obviously, it's had some damage. Uh, but just seeing the um, the nature of this project is an anchor for. You know, we always think about downtown Sandusky, but the beauty of Sandusky is we have all these areas downtown. We have Hancock. You can tell it was a, a part. Uh, you know, a, a vibrant part of town. Five Points is another example. Maybe down by Shelby Street, Shelby, and uh, I guess that would be West Washington. So I think this might be a good example for the kind of the rest of the community. Yeah, we're blessed with a lot of uh, flat iron buildings, you know, and we're going to kind of steal the name and coin this one, the flat iron. Jeff, have you, uh, in terms of signage, uh, as the units are rented, will you be back to us for approval on signage? 
Absolutely, because I can envision that, you know, if there's a restaurant or some sort of commercial use in there, gotcha. they may want awnings. You know, they're certainly going to want to, you're going to want to see what their signage looks like. We've got some placeholders on there, and it, really what that AZAC board is meant to be is just a placeholder. Right. You know, we envision within that sign footprint being whatever the branding is for that particular use, but I, I, they would definitely come back to you, as would what's being built out on the inside of that first floor. So whether there's anything that engages with the exterior, you'll certainly see those again. The nice thing is, I think, you know, Booterer has cleaned up that lot next to them, planted trees. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're going to expand there. There's parking on the uh, right across the street. Mm -hmm. uh, the only shabby corner then left would be the one at the uh, at the southwest corner of, uh, of uh, Monroe and Hancock. Right. We so just hope we don't lose that building. A lot of potential yeah. for the whole area. And then near the greenhouse and near Monroe School, I mean, it's in the park. Uh, you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I'd just like to say one for staff, for Aaron. I think we should probably just tag this issue of our guidelines recommending not cleaning buildings. I mean, I think to Ryan's point, if they can if they can clean the Sistine Chapel and St. Paul's Cathedral, we could probably stand to clean a few buildings downtown. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, so let's just tag that for our summer project. Okay. Uh, the only question I had was just on the awning. That would be a new addition. There's no current awning or previous awning, that correct? No, that is new. And, okay. and it is specifically kind of, it, 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 this goes a little bit against SHPO guidelines, and I shouldn't even say that, but it does, <laughs> it does project up above there for a particular reason, because that is the entrance to the upstairs, and we wanted to draw some attention okay. to it, so that as you're coming down the street. But it is, again, it is reversible, though, so that awning is you know, nothing more than a couple of anchors into the block, we're not changing the stone behind it, we're not changing the exposed lentil that goes across, so that could easily be reversed. Any other questions from the commission? Uh, just a procedural question then, are we happy to proceed on the whole application as one vote? Is there any requirement or request to yes, split I, it up? I think so. That'd be fine. Okay. With that said then, can I have a motion uh, to? Ms. Chairman, yeah. I move that we uh, grant the certificate of appropriateness within the parameters of the staff's recommendations. Okay, second. I'll second. Any further discussion amongst the commission? Okay. Uh, person, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Griffiths? Aye. Mr. Truca? Aye. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Whaley? Yes. Ms. DeFreitas? Yes. Ms. Yandow? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Jeff, thank you very much. Uh, our <coughs> congratulations to the building owners. Okay, next. Another cold block. My job. There we go. Go ahead. Um, Next, we have 206 and 28 uh, West Market Street, um, storefront renovation, the uh, existing bar. Alex, can you make sure that mic's closed, please? Yep, Thank I'm sorry you. about that. <laughs> Um, so this location is a contributing structure in the downtown Sandusky uh, Commercial Historic District. Um, it's built in 1900. Unfortunately, there's little known information staff could find on this building. Um, all, only we could find was a report from the 1970s. And at the time, um, there was an auto supply store in the bottom story. And then also before that, they had mentioned a TV store. So the only thing we found is that it has been a storefront for some time. Um, so the local inventory also stated that the brickwork and colors um, were important features of this building. So the applicant wishes to renovate the storefront. Um, the main component is the material replacement. Um, all of the black here, seeing the picture, the black material, um, after speaking with the applicant, we believe it's all some type of plasterboard or plywood um, painted black. The applicant wishes to replace all of this, what we assume to be plywood material with um, an acrylic black material. Um, the exact color, the applicant wanted to leave open to commission and staff's interpretation of what we'd like to see best, so they didn't pick one to finalize. Um, there's also a new sign application in this proposal, which staff um, has approved or can approve administratively, and that'll be a part of next month's um, presentation. Um, so we do believe that the new material will increase the curb appeal of this storefront. Although it isn't historically significant, we feel that it does match the historic significance of the 
the downtown itself. Um, so staff has no opposition with the material or the colors. Um, so overall, staff feels these improvements will bring more of an appeal to this, not just building, but just this block in general. So we, just, we appreciate the applicant's investment and uh, you know, transitioning to what could be a more aesthetic material for this building. Um, and we don't have any concerns um, in granting in uh, granting the certificate of appropriateness for this. Um, we just have two conditions, and that's that all applicable permits are obtained through the building department, engineering, and planning department prior to any construction. And that no brick, because it was mentioned as a significant material, um, is to be painted as part of this project or altered. I'll throw in a couple comments. So the, Alec mentioned the brickwork and colors were designated as significant, and we're assuming that's the second and third story in the cornice, not necessarily a storefront, because that's changed a number of times over time. Um, and we also had, we were able to sit down with the applicant after we wrote this report and get a little more information on them. So everything that's currently black in the storefront will get replaced with this new material, which we think is, is gonna be a, an improvement to the storefront. Um, and we recommended to them that we, what we weren't sure of is if any of those colors were reflective or shiny um, in the material sample that they sent. So we suggested the, I think it was charcoal or eclipse, like the darker ones, which I think they were leaning toward eclipse there in yeah, the audience so. if you want to chat with them, uh, the eclipse color. So that was some new information from last time. They also confirmed that they were going to remove the old awning hook up across the top of the windows that you see in this photo. Uh, it's not functional and they may in, add an awning in the future and they understand that they'll come back and show that to you if they do plan to add that in the future. But just removing that, it's not historic, it has no significance and it'll also further um, clean up that property and give it a, a great refresh. Okay, thank you. Um, Cindy, do you wanna come and say anything or either one of you? Yeah, well. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to do this earlier, but would you just um, give us your name and address for the record? Sure, Shad Gunderson, uh, 3548 East Eagle Beard Circle, uh, Port Clinton, Ohio. Okay, thanks. Uh, no real comments other than questions you might have. I'm happy to, I'm happy okay. to answer. Yeah. Questions? Anyone? Is this uh, palette the acrylic material that you're that considering? Is. Yes. Any six options? Yes. Which one do you like the best? Uh, I think we're sticking with the black, the, the closest one to the existing okay. color today. Yeah. They all look good. Just want to know what your favorite was. <laughs> is that the carbon or the eclipse? They all kind of look black to me. Uh, I think it's the farthest one over carbon. I think. Carbon. Okay. Eclipse is Eclipse, the darker one. Is the darker one. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just confirming you're not doing anything with the windows at this point? No. Okay, so they'll stay as is. Correct. Yes. Understood. Yeah. Well, and they, 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 these guys already exposed the windows, so yeah. yeah I think that's, that's, this is just a great add to, uh, to you know, further improve this building. Any other questions? Do you guys uh, have a contractor on board and any details for a drip edge where you're removing the existing to prevent water coming back in? Are you just leaving that up to the contractor? Kind of leaving that up to the contractor? Yep. Yeah. I'll be sad to see the uh, pigeon coop go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will be a sad <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Can I have a motion? on this particular recommendation, please, or application. Mr. Chairman, I motion to approve. A second. Second. Okay, uh, motion is on the table. Is there any final discussion from commissioners? If not, Kristen, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Griffiths? Yes. Mr. Truca? Aye. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Whaley? Yes. Mr. Freitas? Yes. Ms. Yandel? Yes. Mr. Schultz? All right, thank you very much. One down, one to go. <laughs> go ahead, uh, Alec. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we're moving on to 151 East Market Street. 
This is a contributing structure in the downtown Sandusky Commercial Historic District. This looks so much nicer. Um, a little bit of history. The original building was built prior to 1915. There was no um, exact date on this. Um, the new building we have today was built after 1939, also no exact date. Um, it was built after the Market Street Fire of 1939. It's the closest we could get to the building's completion. So there's two parts to this. So here's a, here's a picture of the old building, the previous. Here's today's building. So there's two items on the agenda today. Item one is to renovate the pillars to add uh, both marble and then also manufactured sandstone and uh, whatever part of the pillar that matches, um, which is currently open brick. And then item number two is they wish to enclose awning boxes uh, with manufactured sandstone to match the material and color of the existing building as well. Let's see here. So we do think that these projects will um, increase the curb appeal of this building um, while maintaining what is understood to be the original character. Um, there's no proof of that these materials were the original staff believes they were, though. Um, and like I'd mentioned, all these items are planned to match the color and material as best as possible to what um, is existing. Um, there was one alteration to the original proposal. If you look at um, the larger red box on the screen, whatever's behind the, the plywood or the, the wood here, they wish to, instead of replace half of it with marble, they want to do the entire section with the manufactured sandstone. Um, the applicant has stated this was a cost effectiveness option, um, which staff does not also oppose. Um, so based on this, we staff feels that these improvements will bring more appeal to this building, um, you know, get maybe some more tenants on this first floor, make it more appealing. Um, so staff appreciates the applicant's proposed investment, and we recommend granting the certificate of appropriateness for the facade renovation that includes both the pillar alteration, material alteration, excuse me, and then also the overall facade alteration um, with the following conditions, and that's that all applicable permits are obtained to the building, engineering, and planning departments. So just to clarify, they, they're planning to wrap the bottom of the pillars mm -hmm. with the granite, just like they originally had proposed. So the exposed brick, we, we believe, was covered at, at one point, and then the granite fell off, cracked, was removed, et cetera. So they're going to wrap those. They were going to do the granite on the sides, where the white kind of plywood is now, at, but they're proposing to do sandstone there because for cost reasons. So that's the change, but it's still just two materials, one granite around the columns and then the sandstone material above in the awning boxes and then on those edges. Since it's not at the character of, this, of the street as much, it's more of like tucked in and it receives a lot of shadow anyway, uh, we didn't really see issue with doing the sandstone there, especially for the cost effectiveness of that, so. Okay. Um, great. Uh, would you like to come back up or are we? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to save you the walk. What's going in there? Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, the, uh, Name again, or no, all right, all right. Uh, the only thing I would add to that was that uh, we recently had a conversation with uh, Balcone, who's going to be the provider for the stone, yeah. and uh, they were indicating they were having problems sourcing the material. So the uh, the sides removing those from the order is going to help uh, get that done sooner. Got it. Okay. Any questions from Commissioner? Mr. Chairman, I I just like to say that. Um, Thank you for fixing. I drive, this is one of the buildings I drive by that I see so much value in, and you know it was built after the fire, and uh, there was probably a lot of character there at one time, but uh, you know it was always been kind of a plain Jane, and just just in my mind, I'm always trying to figure out how can you doctor that up to get more value out of it because that's the, the culture. Aaron said in that street is amazing. If you can bring it out, I, I appreciate you trying to figure out some ways to make it a little more eye appealing. Yeah, okay, okay, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's going to be worth some. Yeah. Thank you. The only question I had is on that side panel, mm -hmm. um, are you going to wrap the whatever the black stone you wind up with, are you going to wrap that around the corner like it is on the individual panels or just leave it on the front? Uh, 
you understand where, where I'm getting at? Yeah. Not that it, not that it matters. But it's going to wrap, uh, if I'm understanding you correctly. So it would wrap around kind of the same distance as the standalone pillar. So from a distance, it would look like it's a standalone pillar, even though it wasn't essentially. Correct. Okay. I think, the crowbar. Okay. are you asking about the red box around the white, Correct. existing white? That's what they're proposing is all sand. Yeah, sorry, that, that's, that's all. Yeah. They were going to half and half, but the stone price was throwing them off Got and the it. lack yeah. of availability. Okay. And we'll bring that out and cap it up against the, right. the wall. Understood. Any other questions? Okay. No, I, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I do too. It's exciting. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I have a motion on this application, please? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. Motion approved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No? Okay. Call the roll on this application, please. Mr. Griffiths? Yes. Mr. Truca? Aye. Mr. Heinzer? Yes. Mr. Whaley? Yes. Mr. Freitas? Yes. Ms. Yandow? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Okay, okay. <clears throat> cool. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. So the next item on the agenda is 107 Columbus Ave. Um, they're here for two. Sorry, that address doesn't ring a bell. Could you? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the State Theater. Um, here for two pieces of work, which is building renovation and also building addition. Um, this is both a contribute structure to the downtown historic district and also the National Register. Brief history, it was built between 1928 and 1929. It's been used as state theater offices and storefronts since it was built, only changing owners um, a handful of times throughout the years. It was built as a typical 1920s movie palace, is what um, the 1982 um, inventory had stated, <coughs> which was full of embellishments of the period. At one time, there was a bowling alley in the basement, billiards is what was mentioned. Um, and at one point, Warner Brothers leased this property for use. Um, this was listed on the National Register in 1982, and the register of that era, or that age, excuse me, that year, states the following. Um, this theater has curved gables topped with an anthemion motif, two rows of carved roping decorate each arch, and there are, some, there are stone urns in between the arches at the upper roof line. The roof line between the arches has a cornice frieze topped with pineapple decorations. Um, so in June of 2020, as we know, um, severe, a severe storm hit Sandusky causing damage to the original structure um, of the theater. The high winds caused what was the 70 foot tall stage house to collapse um, while also damaging the interior of the property. Um, a phase one was um, completed, more of a mitigation project. So they are here tonight to more or less do the next phases and expand and renovate um, what was also torn down, but expand upon that, add another building. So the looking at three different scopes here, so exterior renovation, stage house reconstruction and expansion, and then a building um, addition, starting with the exterior renovations. Um, the applicant seeks to replace aluminum storefront door and adjacent window on the northwest corner of the building. Um, the doors to be replaced with hollow, hollow metal pan, panel style fire doors to match the existing non-historical fire doors um, in the photo here. And then also the window opening is to be infilled with brick to match the existing brick wall. Um, the second item is the stage house reconstruction expansion. The stage house is going to be built with an increased depth from the original, um, same height, expanding from 25 feet to 70, 47 feet um, to match the width. The, the height will be 70 as the original. Um, the exterior of the stage house will match the buff brick on the north and east facades um, and the red brick on the south and the west as historically built. The loading dock will remain in the same location. Item three is the building addition. The applicant seeks to build behind the annex on the south of the historic theater um, to support back of house functions as well as provide additional venue space. The two-story addition will be differentiated from the historic theater and massing, but contextual and scale to the existing um, structure. The exterior color will be terracotta based on recommendation, recommendations from the State Historic Preservation Board. The exterior material will be gypsum fiber reinforced concrete panel. 
the new addition sits behind the existing non-historic annex and won't be visible from any primary east facade. Um, it'll only be visible from the north and the parking lot and the loading docks. So a few things I wanted to mention um, for the new building alteration, or excuse me, the new building guidelines. Um, it need not duplicate designs found in adjacent and nearby buildings. It should be the average height of nearby buildings. Recreate the variety of materials typical of the area. Use uh, rough face concrete, block, or rock veneer. And new buildings should maintain proportions overall scale of adjacent and nearby buildings. Staff feels, and this was the Sandusky Preservation Guidelines that we took this from, and staff feels that this project does meet those. Um, and also, we'd like to make a note that the State Preservation Board did critique this fairly um, fairly well, so staff is confident with what's in front of us today that they do meet any state historic guidelines for that reason. But we are excited to have this in front of us today. This has been a long time in the making, and we're excited to see this investment going in and this um, structure um, and expansion to be put into place. So based on that, staff recommends granting the certificate of appropriateness for all the features of the project including the exterior renovation, stage house reconstruction, expansion, and also the building addition uh, with the following conditions, and that's that all applicable permits are obtained to the building department, engineering department, and planning department, and any other applicable agency prior to construction. Okay. I want to add one comment that normally if we got a new build, somebody has an empty lot and they want to build a new building, we would expect that to be a, a fairly scrutinous process that they'd come in and talk to us a bunch of times. We might even have them preliminarily show that to you for comments before we would even ask you for a vote. Um, I would expect a lot of back and forth. In this case, this is a state historic preservation tax credit project. So they've worked closely with the state historic preservation office to do all of those things. They've sat down with them a bunch of times and gone through a bunch of revisions with them. And since the state has signed off on this, our code still requires us, us to bring this to you because it's a major change. Um, so we feel confident that the state has kind of put this through the ringer and, and are really excited to see the project and, and feel that it, it, it is a great contribution to the character of the downtown. Great, thanks. Chris, do you guys want to come in? Chris Parthmore for 107 Columbus Ave. Hi, uh, Chris Lozier, uh, uh, 1871 West 47th Street, Cleveland. And Chris is with the LR Group, our architecture firm, and sits on the board of the League of Historic American Theaters as well. Great. Go ahead, did you have a presentation in particular or not? Uh, we don't. Okay. Um, we're just excited about it. I think it's pretty straightforward. We're here to answer any questions that you have and, okay. and uh, go from there. Um, I would like to, Alec, and just with yep. the committee's approval, I think we should just take each of the pieces one at a time just because they're fairly distinct. Um, first one being the door, replacement of the door. Any questions on the door and the replacement of the door issue? Okay, and that's a like for like with the current materials, correct? Apart from breaking up that one correct. window. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, can I have a motion to approve the so, so moved. first element of this, which is the replacement of the door, exterior renovations? Second? I'll second. Second? Any further discussion? Okay, Christian, you want to call the roll on? Item number one. Mr. Griffiths? Yes. Mr. Truca? Aye. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Whaley? I abstain, and I'll abstain from all the theater votes. Mr. Freitas? Yes. Ms. Yandel? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Schultz? Yes. Okay, thank you. The second one is the stage house reconstruction and expansion. Um, I guess my two questions were, could you just talk about the expansion and how that's changing the footprint of the, the old historic structure? And two, talk about the changes on the kind of north side of the building and how that will tie into what's current, what was there previously? Yes, so in community feedback, as well as a, a want from the State Theater Board of Directors over decades has been to expand the stage to add more depth the width is fine, but it was a very shallow stage. It limited things like Broadway plays and things like that that we can do. They've wanted to do this for so long that when they added the, uh, 
loading dock in, they put footers for a wall in at that time, hoping they would do it somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. um, it'll just give us larger capacity to do different shows, larger Broadway shows, larger concerts. And um, so that's the extra 20 feet that you see coming towards the west. Um, with that, with a larger stage, you obviously need more backstage support to support that stage as well. Um, and you'll see that in the next part of the addition. From the north, you, you asked about looking at it from, from, from the, the north. From that, yeah. From the so north that'll side. be, um, uh, it'll just come back straight back like, like brick, same color. And you can, see, you can see with what's already been done, we were able to find reclaimed brick and blend that so that it's nice and smooth. And then the, the um, loading bay is staying where it is. So there's no, there's no moving, there's no expanding the overall size of the property. Correct. It stays on our property. You will, looking at it from the north, if you're looking at the loading dock, you will be able to see um, some of the new addition, which mm -hmm. I think is the next item. Uh, above that, but just from that angle. Okay. And then just to confirm, from the Columbus Ave sideline, there are, I know there are site elevations here, but there are no changes, as far as I can see, to the sight line from Columbus Ave itself on both sides of the street. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, that's correct. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, Mr. Can Chairman, I, I, yep. I'm, I don't want to diminish a marketing opportunity, but I'm pretty comfortable with just granting a certificate of appropriateness. We, uh, I didn't see any objections whatsoever from the board, and uh, staff did a great job of uh, mm -hmm. presenting it. The state's been involved, so I think we can just move on and, and take a vote. On the next two? Or on everything, yeah. Okay. I mean, we could, I mean, unless you guys wanted, I, I, I don't think that many, we'd have a big audience watching the landmark. Which is like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can answer any questions about the other parts that you well, have. Uh, we'll do that. And we can very move on to discussing. with what's been presented, I think. Let's yeah. move on and discuss the <laughs> item, the third item as well at the same time then, and we can vote on, on yeah. all of that. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, we're in good hands here. DLR group does amazing work. You guys did the uh, Tennessee Theater in Knoxville, Tennessee, which yes. I've seen hundreds of shows there, and it's one of the most beautiful theaters in the world. So we get any of that here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're familiar with that theater. It's, it is a I, I used to live right around the corner. Uh, do, yeah. do you know Becky Hancock? Becky? Do you know Becky? I don't know Becky. I know uh, Tom Servone. Executive okay, director. Yeah. Tom Servone oh, yeah. was one of my yeah. theater teachers at the University oh, of Tennessee. Nice, nice, small nice. small yeah. worlds in the sea. Small, small world, yeah. <laughs> we have, appreciate your, your conference, and we are very excited to be able to be the theater. Uh, State Theater team. Yeah, I mean, this looks like a home. So, thank you. Through Good. Yeah, thank air. you. Yeah. I got, I received one question about the Columbus Avenue facade, like the marquee and the, the okay. that, is there any exterior renovation? I mean, we didn't read any, but I just thought if you had anything we, to say about if you're doing anything. We would come back to you for signage if we do anything for signage. Got it. And there's no current change. It's not currently in the plan, but if we do decide we want to do something with the marquee or any signage up front, we would come back. And there is no, ch as I understand it, in this project, there is no change at all to the Columbus Ave. That is correct. Profile at the front of the theater. That's exactly it remains as is. Was not damaged in the storm. Correct. There's no change to that. Okay. Real quick, just based off that, Renan, is that an outdoor space? Is that a patio? Yeah, it's an outdoor terrace area on the second floor there. And is that for the this, um, the new smaller theater and, and it's all like the, the comedy stage, the jazz club stage? Is that all separated? How does that no, that's that's just kind of a uh, open air space that um, it's both aesthetics and functionality. You know, we could it, it can be a small gathering space. We'll have a little bit of AV in there, but um, yeah, then it was like you know cocktail hour, or it's more just for uh, so one of the, one of the things DLR Group has done a really good job of in the design of the entire thing is making the spaces versatile for just about anything. So sounds good. I, I wouldn't want to pigeonhole any part of the theater into Fair one enough. kind of thing. Sure, yeah. Um, but it, it'll it'll be used for many different things. Cool. Yeah, and I just want to highlight, I think, so everybody understands that this third piece is a brand new piece of the theater that does not exist, that does include within it the historic stage or dressing rooms, correct? Those are part, those are internalized into this new addition. Mm -hmm. That is correct. They are, they are internalized and not going anywhere. Right. And because of the way that the national guidelines treat new additions to historic buildings is why it looks the way it does and it's very different architecturally from, say, the facade on the Columbus Ave site. 
those historic dressing rooms also have all those signatures from performers over the years in them. Some of you have seen those, and, and we wouldn't want to touch those. Understood. Any further questions? Okay, if that's the case, can I please have a motion on this application? Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we uh, grant the certificate of appropriateness for this application. I'll second. Second, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, being none, Kristen, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Griffiths? Aye. Mr. Truca? Aye. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Whaley? Abstain. Mr. Freitas? Yes. Ms. Yandel? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Thank you. The certificate is approved. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, it was great. So, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. It is. Black it's very Friday exciting. Yeah. Ceremonial groundbreaking. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Okay. Looks, nice. yeah. uh, looks like we have a couple of administrative approvals. That's Alan? correct. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 124 East Market Street. Um, it is a contributing structure to the downtown Sandusky Historic District. It was on the agenda from last month for a storefront renovation. Um, they came back with signage, a finalized signage, excuse me. So they had two signs. They had a wall sign um, in the image here. They also had three separated window signs. Um, window signs don't have much regulation, uh, but we did find it. I mean, we did. The only criteria that window signs have is that it can't be more than 25% of the window. So each window um, staff felt that it, they were less than 25%. Um, so let's see here. So the, the pro sign also meets, the wall sign also meets any permitting requirements. Um, they do have a permit in that I am reviewing as right now. Um, the requirement is, let's see here. The pro sign meets the requirement at 13.75 square feet, then they have 20, 20 square feet of usable signage area <clears throat> on this building. Um, so staff feels that it was a good quality design, simple graphics, simple messages, simple colors. Um, the shape is appropriate. None of the colors are fluorescent. The background's not white. Um, so based on those standards, um, staff did grant this uh, administratively. Um, they got their certificate of appropriateness at, um, on March 28th of 2022. This next one looks dodgy. The street's on fire. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> might want to rethink it. <laughs> it's a little too late for that. <laughs> so uh, for 305 East Water, there was a patio expansion that was administratively approved. Um, the staff felt it was not a significant change, so we could administratively approve it. Um, expands the existing deck. Oh, excuse me, it is a non-contributing non -contributing structure in the downtown historic district. Um, they're expanding um, their deck in order to accommodate outdoor seating, more outdoor seating and live music. Um, the submitted materials state that it will utilize existing or match existing railing, color, railing, color, style, character, um, if new materials needed. Um, the deck will be constructed with composite material and will match the color of the deck. Um, and then the composite material is visible um, of construction of several outdoor decks in the downtown area. Um, and then we felt that the exterior ex architecture would not be negatively affected by this project. So staff felt that we could, uh, staff did approve a certificate of appropriateness um, on March 17th of 2022. Excuse me. Thank you. I noticed yesterday on one of my daily saunters down shoreline, they were pouring concrete in the grapple and the sleet. Like, get after it. Hardcore. Yeah. Building owners a hard case, apparently. <laughs> he was cracking the whip again. Uh, let's see, we have other business. Yes. So if you remember, I came back, actually, I don't know if all of you were on the commission yet. So um, the arts and culture, the public arts and culture commission does an annual work plan. So they have a specific amount of budget. And in the fall, I facilitated several meetings with them to come up with a draft work plan. One of their draft work plan items was to launch a vinyl mural program in uh, downtown. And I came to you at that time when it was draft and said, do you all have concerns with this? Everybody thought it was a good idea, so we have finalized. It's in our work plan, and we're moving forward with that. 
So the project is on page nine of that 2022 Public Arts and Culture Work Plan. If you want to read the whole description, we based it um, pretty strongly on the mural, vinyl mural program in the short north. One reason is that I'm very familiar with that and I had some contacts there I could call for questions and that they are have a very exacting historic preservation commission that approved that project. So it's like if, if they're cool with it, then I feel pretty comfortable with it, uh, that they're not gonna damage the buildings. And um, that it, so it's a rotating project. We expect the murals to be up for two to five years. They use a heat application to apply the vinyl and then they take it down in the same way. Um, we had commissioners sent potential locations, so they took a bunch of photos and said, here's where we think they might go. We evaluated 34 potential locations, and then I asked them to rank them from like one to 10 of like, one was like, can we please not, and 10 was like, we must put it here. Uh, and then the top 10 kind of narrowed it. I followed up with many of those owners. Seven of the building owners said, go ahead. They want to say, they want veto power on what art goes up in that location, but they approved the ability to put the mural on that building. And I'm gonna show you those. So basically, six of those uh, uh, locations that the building owner said yes, the Arts Commission said they were highly interested in are in our historic district. So I wanna show you each of those, and we can talk about any of them with more or less detail um, to see if there's any, basically what I wanna hear from you, if there's any you're like, please don't throw that out, we don't want it there, or if you're okay with all of them, if you wanna do a formal vote, I, don't, I would leave that to the chair of how you wanna proceed. Um, and then I will also mention that we tried to do like the backs and sides of buildings, so I, we don't wanna put a mural on something that has beautiful historic character. We tried to pick kind of vacant spaces where they're gonna add character to the historic district. Um, another thing I'll add is that the community members, Arts Commission members, and many people say, we'd love to see more murals downtown. It's a, it's a, a way to add vibrancy. We feel confident it's not gonna damage buildings, and, and we really think it will be a value add to, to our, the culture and the character of downtown. So I'm gonna flip through them all, and then we can, can chat just, about. Can I Go just ahead. jump yes, in please. just on, a, on the conversation of whether we need to vote on them or not, I guess, and I'm open to discussion. I think my view would be that like signage, if, if these are not permanent, they're not a permanent change to the building, they're essentially the same as signage, they're gonna come and go over the years, if as long as they are, you know, kind of considered to be non-permanent and within the scope of what the Arts Commission wants and the property owners are happy, my view would be that they, it would be the same as an administrative staff approval. Uh, yeah, and I, and I correct you. I mean, a sign is uh, not, as long as it's not permanent, typically we wouldn't vote on that anyway. That's true. Right? That's true. So, like, if they're going to hang, a, you know, a banner inside a window or something, we don't have anything to do with that. So, I, I kind of agree with Alan. What would the size be of them? Yeah. Um, they're generally, like, 10 by 15 feet, but th that it, the size really isn't limited. That's just what they were kind of thinking because with the budget they have, because okay. they want to do probably six projects is about what the budget we have. You can make them as big as the entire side of the building. I talked to a Toledo sign company, and there's one in Toledo that is the entire side of a building. Um, but the, the way we scoped it was generally like a 10 foot by 15 are you, foot. Are you familiar? I, I suppose most of us are familiar with what Bucyrus did with the two murals there. Mm -hmm. Which are full? They are magnificent. You know, those are painted. I think, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. And and the historic <clears throat> nature of the of the one mural, it's it's really interesting. I talked to you, Cyrus. They yeah, apparently everybody, every every single thing in that mural has something to do with the history of your mm -hmm. site. Really nice. They're really neat. A big plus. They they told me that their law director told them that they didn't have to follow their own zoning code and they could just yeah. paint murals wherever they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no. Would the law director like to comment? <laughs> heard a no there. Um, I guess that would be. Uh, um, any other thoughts or views? I mean, I, you know, it, it's art, right? Not everybody's going to love every piece, but uh, I think it's important we, we kind of balance how much we start to determine what business owners, homeowners, property owners want to do with their property, right? That, I don't really think that's our place, personally. Um, no, I haven't lived it over 15 years in Knoxville, Tennessee, where we have an amazing, where it's like my second home, right? I moved from mm -hmm. Sandusky there. So um, there are murals everywhere, like Dolly Parton, and there are a lot of murals of the Smoky Mountains, right? So it's a uh, murals and art representing 
that time, that place, that culture, I think we have an opportunity here. I would be okay if it wasn't vinyl, right? I'd, I'd be willing to take it a step further just because, but also I'm always going to side on the side of art and mm -hmm. what that can represent. So, um, you know, I, I think when you first brought it up, you know, I was like, let's get this thing going because Sandusky has been around, right, 1818. We have so much culture and history here. And so I just think it would be a huge opportunity to not, uh, it would be a missed opportunity to not do this mm -hmm. and, and give people the courage to really go for it, right? I think the only, I just don't want to see anybody half-ass it. Like, if we're going to do this, let's do it. Yeah. And let's really encourage artists and, and property owners to yeah. go for it and swing for the fences on this. Because yeah. uh, I think people, especially who are visiting from other places, um, and maybe it's their first time, um, to Sandusky, and if especially if they're coming from a place where there is a huge art scene, and they see it and it's half-assed, then that's going to leave a, uh, a bad taste in their mouth, right? And it's going to make us look small-time, but we're not small-time. There's, there's already been so much progress, so many, so many people even just on this commission who have moved here um, and, and setting up their lives here and businesses here. So if we're going to do this, let's go, all <coughs> in. let's go for it. You know, it's not all that different from the sculptures. Some people like them, some people like some, and not others, big deal. And, uh, you know, so these are on buildings, but nonetheless, it's a similar kind of, they're temporary anyway, so I agree. Okay. I wasn't here when you originally presented that. I'm just curious, how will the artist be selected and how is that process gonna work? We're working through that right now, but we plan to do a call for artists um, and it'll be surrounding by a theme, which is, pretty open so the artists have like a pretty wide range of what how they could interpret that theme um, we have a draft theme and another one that's like around Sandusky histories nautical something something like it, it's a deliberately broad but kind of and then some rubric to help them evaluate and pick their favorites and then we'll go so the arts commission expects to we'll do a call for artists collect responses they'll evaluate pick their favorites and which building they think is best located you know which mural is best for that building one of them's up high so we wouldn't want to put a, something with a lot of fine detail up high because you won't be able to see it that sort of thing then we'll go to the building owners and say this is the mural the arts commission would like to place here is are you okay with that and if they say no then we ha might have to switch them around but that's the general process um, we're hoping to get it done, you know, this summer-ish, but things can take longer than you think sometimes. So we're, we're, we're pushing ahead on it. And then would they stay up there permanently or would it be a rotating? Uh, we, we, it's pitched as a rotating program to rotate every two to five years, depending on what other projects they take on in the next couple of years. Since this was my first administration of a work plan, I didn't want to like set them in stone on something. We want to get some flexibility. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of evaluate in two years and be like, we want to leave them up. We want to switch them out. They can, if they're at uh, street level, people can pick at them. So there's some repair you can do. But if they, if that starts to happen, hopefully it doesn't. But if that starts to happen, then we might want to remove them for that reason and, and replace them in a couple of years. So we'll see. It's kind of similar to what we did on the transit um, shelters, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, those were, I think, just like regular sticker adhesive. I'm not sure if they, this is like a heat yeah, um, apply, like but the concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. conceptually. I mean, and I think the, the two year, you know, minimum, at least that's fair to the artist, right? You don't want to artist talk. It's, it's, it's a community. So if, if the artist in this first go around, anything leaves a bad taste in their mouth, we're not going to get people want to do it and push, you know, push the limit the next go around. So how, how all this is done up front is going to determine um, this aspect of city beautification moving forward across the board. And I think that's something to consider. Okay, so I think the consensus is that we do not feel like we need to vote on this. Okay. Um, I think it would be nice to be informed as to what's going on going forward. But okay. so did you want to see the six love to see locations? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, ooh, that's a good one. two thirty one West Water, and just so you know, I drew the red boxes. They're not necessarily to scale. I just needed to help them draw their attention to where a mural would make sense on each building. So um, the exact location isn't True, finalized, but it's a general. Uh, so 231 West Water, this would be right while as you're walking from the parking lot on Jackson Street to the pier. Great. 129 Columbus Ave, this is one I mentioned that's up high, so we want to see something like really bold and simple in design, so you could really uh, see that from the street and enjoy it from Columbus Avenue. 
maybe just take it all the way up that rig, the <laughs> hypotenuse in that angle for that visual connectivity. Yeah, there you go. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Uh, 207 East Water Streets. So that would be really at the pedestrian level. Same um, thing there. Let's take that all the way to the water. Let's just. <laughs> this gentleman will it's not going to go on right. the man's face. Does he see have to the stand dotted there line? Did you see how this I, 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 I've made yeah. that line dotted. So <laughs> Is that so you can walk through? Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, 246 East Market Street. This is the Schmidt building on the side. Uh, 220 East Water. So this one I think is really neat because it'll kind of sneak up on you because the historic facade wraps around that corner. You're not going to see it until you're closer to it. I think it's a really cool location. And then 301 East Market. Uh, if we don't, if we, we're going to, we're going to show Tim Dorsey this one and the building owner. So the building owner also mentioned that if this location doesn't shake out, they, it's connected to the thrift store there. He said that he would be fine with it over on Wayne Street on the side of the thrift store building instead of this location. So we'll see. But that's not a historic structure, but it's in there. We're and that's all six. The seventh one is on the wall of the Chesapeake that, like, covers their garage like right on along the pathway it's not in the historic district but well i volunteer like, 316 east water it's facing east if you need it i'm just saying it's there <laughs> just recently tuck pointed too, so <laughs> recently tuck pointed so i had to go <laughs> great good thank you thank you anything else i have a motion to adjourn so second we are adjourned thank you very much